Uh, first of all, just uh, let me uh, say we're, we're pleased, not under these circumstances, but pleased to be in, in Clay County, County Commissioners. We, we appreciate that. Uh, you know, we've uh, across all across West Virginia, we've had a tough uh, few days, tough several days here, and you know, the devastation is, is, is really bad in all the communities that I've uh, been able to visit so far. And, I was uh, telling the commissioner earlier as I grew up in Logan County and, you know, I'm used to it. I've been there. We've lost furniture and we lost, you know, lives and everything else. And it's not a fun thing. And uh, the old saying used to be before they built R.D. Bailey Dam over in Wyoming County is not uh, uh, if it's going to flood in Logan County, it's when it's going to flood because we knew we'd always get two or three a year. But uh, obviously, you know, what we're seeing here in this flood the last few days is just very quick downpours and just, you know, the, 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 the rush of the water has just been unbelievable. And, and seeing the number of homes, and we know that we're into the uh, probably thousands. We know we've at least got a thousand homes that have been uh, destroyed. So, uh, you know, we continue. A lot of them can never be inhabited again, and a lot of them can be. So uh, one of the things we just wanted to talk about today, I'll tell you uh, who we've got with us today. I've got... Uh, uh, Jimmy Jeanette, who's head of our Homeland Security. I got General Hoyer, who's our Adjutant General, head of the National Guard, and and Alvin uh, Lewis, who is uh, here, sent in by FEMA, and he's been a great help to us. He's seen everything that we have, and really, <coughs> excuse me, cuts through some of the uh, the red tape. You know, when we ask for FEMA help, uh, the uh, uh, initially uh, uh, did a uh, uh, proclamation. Declaring uh, emergency situation in 44 counties, and the reason we did that, the storm was kind of going like this, and we really couldn't tell where it was going to hit. We just figured it's not going to hit the northern or the eastern panhandles, so we basically took most of the counties in between, and and we were right, <laughs> it hit it hit hitting our target, but uh, we'll be probably uh, uh, ratcheting down on those counties who were not hurt, and so we can focus all of it tomorrow's yes, okay. Uh, so we can focus all the efforts of the counties like Clay and, and others, Roan, that have been hit hard and, and, and make sure we concentrate all of our efforts there. Uh, I had a call from the, uh, the president, President Obama, on uh, Saturday. Uh, he you know, was uh, asked me to convey his condolences to all the people who had lost everything and uh, agreed to work hard with us. He did that. Uh, we applied... Uh, or I requested the de federal declaration on uh, one day, and, and he had it approved the same day. Uh, since that time, I've asked uh, for a declaration for five other counties. They've been approved today for Clay County, Roan County, uh, Summers, uh, Monroe, and Fayette are the five counties. So now there's a total of eight counties that have the, uh, the uh, federal declaration. That means that people are, <clears throat> for major declaration, uh, people are uh, uh, eligible for both in individual and public assistance. So, you know, uh, uh, Clay County is included in it. Uh, to the media and everybody else, I keep on saying it. If you've had damage, your home's been damaged anyway or destroyed, you know, please take pictures of everything. If you're having to buy things, take pictures of it. And Al can, Al, Alvy can uh, address us a little bit more in a minute to, to make sure everything is documented. And, uh, you know, once now that the uh, presidential declaration has, has been declared, uh, the best thing to do is go ahead, get a hold of FEMA, get registered, give them your information and so forth so they can start, start the process. Uh, we should be having a great number of people from FEMA in the area soon, and Alvy can, uh, can address that also. Uh, so with that said, uh, yeah, we'll do everything we can. Uh, just from a personal standpoint, you know, West Virginians are being West Virginians. It's just amazing and heartwarming to me to see the number of people who's just reaching out to their neighbors. They may have lost their own things. I was with, with some firemen yesterday at uh, down in Clendenin, and, and uh, I think there was three or four of them who had parked the cars there. They were out helping other people try to you know, get them out of the water and so forth. Their cars got washed away or destroyed as volunteers. So, you know, that's just uh, the way West Virginians are. We're here to help each other. Uh, we've been getting calls. I've been getting calls from other governors from around the country offering assistance any way we can. 
lots of donations pouring in to help uh, uh, VOAD and, and our uh, uh, Red Cross. So, you know, people are people know that we've got problems and they're trying to help us. And uh, especially it's West Virginians. Our first responders have done a, a great job putting their own lives in danger. Our troopers, our National Guard, our conservation officers, uh, you know, uh, in, in very dangerous situations. And, uh, you know, I can't thank them enough. Our Sheriff's Department, I <laughs> get that over there. But, uh, I mean, just thanks for all, all the first responders and for everything you do. And now I'm going to call on Jimmy Jeanette, our head of Homeland Security. Jimmy, you got any advice or any information you want to give? Well, now that the, uh, the declaration has been made, the most important thing to do is to get people to start calling in and registering with FEMA. Uh, once that registration is made, then FEMA will reach out uh, over the last uh, 24 hours, and Alvy can touch on it. Uh, a lot of money has been put out to individuals to start assisting them get back in their homes. Uh, there is a lot of resources being applied around the state. This is not just a localized event in one area. It's it's spread out through the entire state, and it's and it's fairly large. So. Uh, again, there are a lot of resources. There's still resources coming. We still have commodities coming. So, uh, you know, it's our intention, as the governor said, to take care of the people of this state, and we're going to do that the best we can. Uh, as with any disaster, everything doesn't happen the minute the disaster happens, so it takes a little while to get everything spun up and to get the resources out there on the street. But there's uh, uh, right at 500 National Guard that are on the street working across the state to help. Uh, the state police have numerous uh, personnel that they've moved around. Uh, all the state agencies have got resources. The Department of Transportation has moved resources from other parts of the state to, to help in the impacted areas. So uh, uh, just I encourage you, the most important thing to get the message out to the citizens is to call and register with FEMA at the 1-800-621-FEMA number. General, you Again, as the governor pointed out, thanks to all you guys, our law enforcement, uh, first responders, health department folks. Uh, as Jimmy said, we've got 500. The governor's authorized us to surge to 700, which we'll be doing here in the near future. And we'll be here until we get what we need to to stabilize to make life back to normal as best we can for folks. So. Okay. Probably on behalf of uh, FEMA. He's, a, he's not a West Virginian, come from another small state like Vermont. <laughs> so anyhow, but he's, he's getting accustomed to uh, West Virginia, and we appreciate what you're doing now. Thank you, Governor. And uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, my small state, Vermont, was affected by a very similar uh, disaster about uh, three and a half years ago. Uh, one of the worst things that hit the state. Uh, I'm a former first responder and a former National Guardsman, so I know exactly what you're going through. Uh, and my hearts and prayers are, are with all of you. And uh, it, it, it gives me a lot of pride to come down here and see how neighbors are helping neighbors. Uh, and that's kind of the spirit of things. Uh, as the governor said, uh, we're here partnered with the state and the National Guard, uh, working to deliver everything from commodities, uh, supplies, uh, to keep things going. Uh, we've also gotten uh, probably uh, close to uh, $300,000 on the street already. Uh, in people's pockets to, to help them in the recovery. Uh, as has also been said, it's very important to get that registration as the first step. That's 1-800-621-FEMA. So please tell your friends, your neighbors, uh, get that registration done right away. Uh, through that process, you'll be contacted uh, and they will schedule appointments to do such things as inspections of the homes to see what the eligibility is uh, to get the money flowing into the, to where it's needed. Uh, Governor, thank you. Alvy, do you, just so people will know, from the time they uh, get registered, do you have any idea? I mean, people's you're sitting in a home that you can't live in, but you know, in life, sure. your life. What's the, kind of the time frame between the time you register and the time that somebody from FEMA should be calling? Them? Yes, sir. So uh, yesterday morning, Monday, uh, I checked with our uh, registration office. At that point, we had uh, roughly uh, 1,000 folks registered, and they had already reached out and contacted 800 of them and scheduled uh, appointments to come uh, do the inspections on the homes. And as I said, we've gotten quite a bit of money out. So it should be a very quick turnaround. If it's not a quick turnaround, if you're waiting uh, 24 or 48 hours, 
go ahead and uh, come up through the chain of command, so to speak, the state, uh, or reach out to FEMA and say, why haven't I been uh, contacted? Also, we're going to have disaster recovery centers opened up throughout the state. Uh, those are also a location to go to to get information and find out about your claims. Uh, yeah, I want to welcome the governor here. I hated he had to come under these circumstances, you know, but that's part of it, I reckon. Uh, your, your soldiers have been great. Uh, your office, Jimmy, has been super good at getting us stuff here. We really appreciate that. Homeland Security has been great. Uh, Sergeant Kiefer and his guys, troopers, is here. We've had no question. All I had to do is mention something that was already on it. Out the door, they've been super. Uh, but like I say, I'm unbelievable what the guards are doing for us and everybody. I mean, they're just, you know, I just appreciate all y'all coming because we couldn't make it without you. But thank, thanks, everybody. I just want to thank everybody for um, pulling together. We need a, um, we're a close town. We're Clay County. Um, and like, just like the governor said, you know, neighbors helping neighbors, whether they're, they've lost everything or if they hadn't lost anything, they were all pulling together. And we want to thank, you know, all the ones that are helping that come into this and volunteer their services. And um, we got to, I think we still have a long ways to go. <laughs> thank you. I'm going to use this form, Governor. Uh, we've been meeting every couple of days with all the different agencies in the county. And uh, at our last meeting yesterday, the, the group decided we need to set up a, uh, a fund to help needy people in the county, and we've done that. And if you would like to donate to that fund to help the people in the county, it's at the Clay, <coughs> Clay County Bank. It's called the Clay County uh, Emergency Relief Fund, and it's at the Clay County Bank. And uh, any donations made to that will go to the needy people in Clay County. And the people who have come in to help us, and I know you've already been thanked, but uh, we appreciate your effort very much. As Greg said, we couldn't do it without you. Thank you. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, sir. Just from, uh, I don't know, the press, if there's any, is there any questions or? Governor, can we have a ballpark? You said a lot of federal money has been spent so far. Do you have a ballpark estimate? How much, how many federal dollars have we really put out? In relief so far. I just do state dollars. <laughs> I'm going to ask about that next. So. <laughs> so on the federal side, I know we're well over 300000 now, but that's in actual dollars going in, in, to people in grants uh, that need it. But we've also been here. We've got over 300 folks on the ground working, uh, setting up those DRCs. We've got folks out in the field, uh, community relation type folks that are going out door to door. Uh, working to make sure people get registered and get the assistance they need. And then we have those commodities that have been coming in for, uh, what, Jimmy, three days now uh, uh, to, to help uh, keep, keep people sustained. So if you roll that all together, I don't have an estimate of that, but it's quite a bit of uh, assistance. And we're going to keep it going as long as needed. The $300,000 are specifically going to people to help with the cleanup, uh, finish their That's correct. Fix homes. That's correct. Okay. That's correct. <clears throat> and, and that does not include food, water, that type of stuff. This is in addition to in grants. Jimmy? Those are basically, I do not have a, 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 a total yet. I got to keep well, reins on this guy or he'll spend it on the, the point, I mean, the point is the way it works with FEMA, when we order water or something, we have, we, we've had so many donations with water and food and things coming in from all kinds of organizations all around the country and so forth. But in order to get things up and going very quickly, we do ask FEMA to ship in water. Basically, if, and everything that, that FEMA does, and Jim, Jimmy can correct me if I'm wrong, but if they pay 75, we pay 25% up. So basically what we do as a state is have to front things up front and then, you know, through whether it's through my contingency fund, whether it's through uh, Department of Highways, and obviously millions of dollars in, in damage to our, to our highways out there. But then that, that goes through the whole process and then we're reimbursed by FEMA is how it worked. I cannot give you a, a specific answer today because there's so many moving parts and there's no bills really come in to us yet. Is that, is that money coming from the contingency fund right now? That's where I will be having to pay right now, uh, uh, as long as it lasts. Uh, remember, it's been kind of shrinking, but uh, uh, anyhow. 
I'm very fortunate to have that and a rainy day fund. So I think that uh, yeah, we'll be able to take care of things. And that's what those funds were, were meant to be for. They were for emergencies like this or, or you know, one-time uh, shortfalls or something like that. Thank goodness we're in good enough shape that we do have that money to help people out right now. Otherwise, we'd have some major problems. Jim and Jim. Yeah. The, uh, the, the last thing we really worry about during the first few days of an event is trying to track what the costs are. Our, our primary focus uh, in the initial uh, stages is protect life and property. And, you know, during this event, we've had uh, considerable loss of life. So we have been in the search and rescue mode up until today, and we're beginning to transition now more toward the recovery uh, mode. So we'll, we'll go back and we'll start working and looking at those costs. But up until now, it's been uh, pretty much full-blown trying to make sure we've located all the people. Uh, we continue to have uh, recovery operations ongoing right now in Greenbrier County. And, uh, and we're still working through to make sure we have every, everybody accounted for. So those, those dollar costs will start gathering together in the next few weeks, but right now it's still a response operation. Is that how long that we can expect to, to wait and care for a damage estimate? How long no. will it take before we know how no, much damage in terms that. of dollars? Uh, it's going to be some time before you know that. I mean, we don't know it. Yeah, that's what we're doing today. We got crews out. We're, they're doing assessments. You know, the FEMA people will be in here. That's, you know, they help us determine the real costs. Of, you know, and, and obviously, you know, the county commissions had their their uh, first responders out, tried to to work with our national guard to get into people's homes. I mean, there are still areas in the flood air, flood zone that we have not been able to get into. Uh, I mean, uh, the commissioner told me he felt sure that you know nobody had lost their life in clay county but there are still certain areas you couldn't get to people's homes so that's what we're attempting to do now some of those homes were damaged some weren't so you know we're still doing that assessment you know i think that we have done the recovery uh, hopefully you know we will find no no additional casualties out there but so we'll just make sure everyone's okay first and then, then we'll start doing the assessments of the real cost uh, we should have a better idea from the from the public side, from like highways, from the from I've got highways doing assessments, uh, the state board of education along with the county boards, lots of schools were damaged and so forth, libraries and those kind of things. So, you know, we will have many of our state facilities, our DHHR offices. I'm just trying to think off my head. Uh, you know, a lot of those different offices around the state where we have them in each of most of the counties have been damaged also. So. You know, the state itself has lost a lot of money on our buildings. Obviously, a lot of ours is covered under our insurance, but uh, some of them may not be. So, anyhow, we will keep you updated as we get information and give you the estimates. Uh, you know, we should have a better estimate here in a week or so on what it's going to cost. Okay. In terms of the, uh, the FEMA grants, yes. um, what is the criteria for designating an area as a disaster area, and why did it take a little bit longer here than the other three? Let me, let me, or, ordinarily, to get a federal disaster declaration, there's a process that you have to go through. And that process is once the event occurs, then you put teams out in the field and you do disaster assessments. You determine what the costs are, what the damages are, and then the governor sends a, sends a request through FEMA to the president. The, the declaration of a disaster is at the sole discretion of the president. In this particular case, we didn't have to go through all that. We made a verbal request to the president, and literally within hours that request was granted. Uh, I'd have to go back and look, but I think probably if you look across the country, this is the fastest a declaration has ever been made. We made the request last night for the additional counties that we had information on, and by today we had that declaration in hand. So. Uh, we, we commend FEMA and the White House for the way they turned this around uh, with the, the support of our congressional delegation. I think this is unprecedented anywhere in the country to see how quick this happened. Yeah, I understand also yesterday we had teams out doing debris removal and assessment trying to get those numbers to FEMA to get those declarations for various counties. We had to stop those operations pull those people off and go back into rescue mode because of the rainstorms that came in yesterday. So it's a, 
it's a fluid moving piece and we're moving as fast as we humanly can without putting these people in harm's way to get those numbers put together to get that put in the declaration to add those counties as quick as we can. Does that kind of go along with maybe you know, people being thinned out because this is such a wide area that had been affected? A absolutely and we just came, Jimmy and I came from Roan County earlier and the disbursement across that county to get to do the head count on the homes to get to that is taking us a lot more time than it did in the compact places like White Sulphur and Clinton and in those areas. So you're, you're absolutely right that that disbursement of, of individuals across the counties in the more rural counties causes us to take more time to get to what we need to do. In, in this particular event, you've got more uh, homes destroyed or damaged than in most events we've seen. Ordinarily with these floods, it's damage to infrastructure that traditionally belongs to the Department of Transportation. So once they do their numbers, we've got some fairly good costs that we can submit to the federal government for reimbursement. But, but our concern and the governor's concern in this event was to try to get help to the citizens first. We've not gone back and worried about reimbursement for the public infrastructure yet. It's, it's the focus has been on trying to take care of the people and to start looking at how we're going to transition them into some kind of temporary housing so that their basic needs are met. And you know, to add to that, a lot of a lot of these individuals work in small communities, like here in Clay County, and it's you know stores or or whatever it may be that may only have a handful of people or 20 people. You know, if that business is, is out, those people have lost their jobs, and obviously we're we're putting our efforts on trying to do what we can to uh, you know work with the SBA and and different uh, state and federal agencies to uh, be able to try to get those people businesses back up again so people can get you know, back in their jobs because last thing we need to, is to see them, you know, just give throw, throw up their hands and say, you know, I don't have any, any place to work in Clay or Lincoln or whichever county it is, and, you know, and, and move away. I mean, these are our family and friends and we want to keep them here. So uh, <laughs> anyhow, we're, we're putting a lot of effort and I've directed my uh, economic Development Office to uh, spend some extra time on trying to figure out what we can do and working with the feds to get additional money to get people, first of all, back in their homes with their families, and then secondly, back to get the businesses open and get these people back to work as quickly as possible. With that, one, one okay, thing, okay. Quick, just in terms of today, because you were here in the county today taking your tour, just wanted to hear uh, what you saw out there and how that uh, kind of goes along with um, this designated. <clears throat> As a disaster area. Yeah, you know, you could see that, I mean, it was limited, didn't get to see a whole lot of the county, but what I saw is the same thing that you've seen if you've driven around here. There's, I mean, homes washed off their foundations, torn down. I mean, vehicles, uh, vehicles in creeks and, and, and uh, you know, just uh, any kind of a way you could think to destroy a home. It is, and it's a little bit different because the area that I was in was a little bit more rural. Whereas yesterday in, in either uh, uh, Clendenin or, or Racine, Raynell, Raynell. <laughs> Racine's boom. Okay, I've, I've, I've got it here. But yeah, it is. You know, you're you're looking at a, a, a town setting where you know you can go block after block, and you know you see the same thing. If the water was eight feet high, and you know, and all the people are doing the same thing. And this one, you may have one house that sets up a little higher and. It's not damaged as much, whereas one setting low may be completely flipped over someplace. So, but yeah, the, the damage is devastating every place I look. And yeah, as, as Jimmy or one I mentioned, just our infrastructure, you look at the roads and the bridges that are washed down and you know, they're gonna have to go back in, do pilings and, and basically reconstruct roads in certain areas. And you know, and we've had that all over the, the whole area and it's gonna take some time and some money to get that fixed back and you know, we're, We'll get it done as quickly as we can. We just ask everybody to use a little extra caution while we're out there. You got, we'll have crews working, you know, it may be one lane traffic and stuff, but we'll get it done just as quickly as we can. So, but yeah, I'm gonna have to run. I thank you all for being here. And, I have a question, Governor. Yes. Um, will FEMA be on site to assist the um, uh, community with putting in a claim? Um, there was rumor today that FEMA was going to be at the courthouse, but Senator Manchin um, sent someone to, uh, to give out information 
about the FEMA process and all of that. Now, the county clerk's office were, was taking names and phone numbers um, and was told that that's a form of registration. Now, some people cannot, they don't have a phone service, and some people don't have internet service. So we will need um, a body somewhere, and I'm, I did volunteer in our meeting to assist because we had a few people that came today and wanted to know what they needed to do. Let me, let me just say, yeah, the first thing, if you do have phone or cell service, mm -hmm. you know, the, the numbers are, are public. I'm sure they're probably on the governor's website, but anyhow, they've all gone out to the media. So. You know, but you look on the governor's website, it tells you the numbers to call or if you want to do it online. Right. And then, you know, uh, and I think Albie will tell you, we're hoping to get these centers set up where we actually got FEMA employees sitting there where people face to face. Face -to -face. Uh, yeah, and those aren't just the FEMA folks. There's many representatives, some from the state, other federal agencies that are there to help all the folks through all the processes uh, of what they're dealing with. And those are disaster recovery centers. And uh, the state uh, selects those sites, and then we fulfill the uh, obligation to come in and, and happy to do it to help folks out uh, to recover. Where are these sites? I'm sorry. Uh, that was my next question. When, Jimmy, maybe you know this, when do we expect to have these sites set up? Of course, we just got the declaration for this county on the way over here. So uh, it, with probably within the next 24 to 48 hours, uh, we will work with the county to identify where they want that location to be, uh, and then we'll start setting that up. Uh, we have the one open, one is open in Clendenin right now, uh, one opened in Greenbrier County today, uh, and now that we've got these additional counties, uh, it won't be a one, one county a day thing. There'll be multiple of these coming up at the same time. So uh, within the next 24 to 48 hours, you should see a site here in Clay County. Let me, uh, let me add to that. We have what's called disaster survivor assistance teams. Those are individuals that go out into the communities. Uh, we'll be sending those in here now uh, since Clay's declared. And uh, they'll be going door to door essentially with the capability to, to do just that, to do that registration. So uh, they will be out here uh, assisting the survivors. Thank you. Thank you, all. Right, thank you all. Appreciate it.